um, declare your, your your flesh and blood status and your life status? Should you be, should you be doing the deed poll before you do the trust? Well, well, your tr- your trust is already created. All the deed poll is doing is establishing in their system that you know who you are and you're processing the collapsing of the trust that they've put in, quote unquote, for your benefit. So, the, the, I mean, I would I would uh, suggest that before you, you, you can go and get your EIN number without putting in a deed poll. Absolutely, because the trust already exists. Well, but I, I would the hmm? trust that you, that your the trust that the trust through Eucadia dot com or the trust through Eucadia. Um, I ha- I don't have a number. I haven't sent anything in to receive a number from your organization. All right. Well, go, when you have you have you gone to one hyphen heaven and had a look at the section there on ecclesiastical deed polls? Have I looked at it yet? Yeah. Yes, I ha- well a few weeks ago. Okay, I, I would go back and have a look and just see the instruction there on how to get your number and what you want to do in terms of registration, and then you decide when you want to and, and if you want to and how you want to follow through. But there are plenty of things you can do without sending an EDP, absolutely. But remember, until you, until you do that, the system presumes that you are still using its property to trade in commerce, yeah? Um, I, I kind of lost a few words. It was a, you broke up a little bit. You said something I, like un- EVP? EVP? Un- I, yeah, until you... Until you give notice to the system through an EDP, they will presume that you continue to trade in commerce in their property. And hence, they will try and tax you, police you, and take your energy. All right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So have so a where read. Would I, where would mm-hmm. I go to find that? The EDP, is it? Yes. Go to one-heaven.org. And you will see a blue box there, and that blue box says Ecclesiastical Deed Poll, and just read what's there. And if you get lost, then obviously write, and it would be a pleasure to help in any way. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, good. Great, thank you, Frank. All right, a question from the chat box again, real quick. Uh, if one does not live in the state where born, how does that work? Serving the Registrar of Vital Statistics, the deed poll, in the birth state, or does that make a difference? Yeah, you just send it to the birth state. I mean, your your CQV trusts are administered in the state of your birth. That's where the re- that's where you were entered into the register of slaves. So that's where you go. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you, Frank. I'm going to lie to you. All right. Uh, Tyber. Hi. Just, just, hi. 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 You ready, Frank? I am. Okay. Uh, can a deed poll help with a criminal record? Uh, a sacred plant possession of her and uh, a theft charge when I was a kid. And what would be the next steps after my EDP is mailed out? Should I file for an EEI number? I just heard you guys talking about that tonight. Uh, well, yeah. Look, your your criminal record is attached to their straw man. And I hate using those words because <laughs> but it's true. I mean, the free man movement is true. It is a straw man. Yep. Uh, they own it. Yep. So uh, unless you're thinking of, uh, of establishing a criminal record in their system against your true trust, uh, when you're trading in commerce in your true trust and the, their person is collapsed, uh, you won't have a criminal record. Yeah. Oh, great, great, because I was worried about traveling south of the border, right? And well, they had yeah, that fictitious it, name with that charge attached to it, so once he's crippled and gone, I can move about freely. Yeah, yeah, once, once you've collapsed the CQVs and their system is, is recognizing that uh, your trust is the, is the trust that should be in their system, absolutely, there's no criminal record on your true trust. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay, yeah, and then the next question was, what would be the next step after I mailed it? Like, I mailed it yesterday to Vital Statistics. So are there any other documents um, I should fill out or any other registration uh, I need to do with your with Eucadia? I would just follow what's, what's in those very, very detailed notes on the site, and, and we are updating it all the time. We're not changing the fundamental thing, but we're improving okay. 
And yeah. those were again yeah. under where? Positive law? What section? No, no, no. Go to go to uh, the homepage of one-heaven.org, and then go and have a look at the ecclesiastical deed poll uh, instructions there on the homepage. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And good luck. Uh, all right, thanks a lot, Frank. Have a good night. I'll let you know how the return goes if I get a letter back within the next seven days. Yeah, well, you know, don't hold your breath, but it's a process. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Thanks again. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Next, we have uh, Ron again. Ron, are you there? Not be the appropriate form. Uh, Frank, this might not be the appropriate forum for this question, but can you explain the steps of um, enacting, it, that's not the right word, but getting the the general binding, spiritual binding, you know, calling on the, the angels to take out these people? Like, yeah. a, you don't have to answer. Well, okay. Because, because, okay, no, 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 it's important. And I, I see a couple of questions in there I'd love to answer, like uh, someone's asked, what's the purpose of offering the Roman cult um, saints of one heaven? So I want to answer a couple of those big big questions. But I'll answer this one. Um, this is the end of their world. This is Armageddon, apocalypse, end of days, judgment day, yada, yada. Huh? It's the end, over. They broke their covenant. The Talmud was smashed in in uh, 1940s in World War II when they confected the end of the world. So they've already they've already in their eye created the end of the world. So don't think that they're waiting for the end of the world. They think they already made it happen, right? Right. And they got away with it. This is one of the things that people need to understand. The ruling elite are so mentally unstable, they actually think that in World War II they succeeded in confecting the end of the world according to the Talmud, and then got away with it. That's why they moved out of ghettos. That's why all the ghettos got abolished in Europe, because they were supposed to live a certain way until the end of days, and they could not enter, according to the Talmud, the Promised Land. They could not set up Israel. And is there a place called Israel? Sure. Yeah. So they've broken their covenant. They smashed their covenant. So the Talmud is, is worthless to them because they're all in dishonor. So binding is really uh, a process associated with their dishonor. They place themselves in binding. You cannot put someone in binding. They put themselves in binding. And binding is ultimately reserved as the very, very last uh, defense in terms of those who hate God who, who hate even darkness, who believe in nothing but themselves. And all those who are under a great binding are those who have been served under the writs, um, sorry, under the deeds, I should say, under the seven great deeds um, of dishonour. And by the way, anyone that uh, dishonours one of the great writs that get issued ultimately when it comes down to it, under a deed, will also be placed under a great binding. So it's not something to be thrown around. <clears throat> it really is a last resort when the flesh has demonstrated complete delinquency and incompetency and refuses to yield. Now, I can assure you that the minions at the moment uh, around the world are uh, still chugging along on the timetable to collapse the currencies and reintroduce the gold. They are so mentally ill, these people, that in spite of the overwhelming evidence, they will not change. So we really have to call the big guns, and the big guns are that they're under a binding. And what happens to them then is what is written. So, yeah, I hope that answers that question for you. Well, Frank, do we have to do something to call on the angels to accomplish that task? No, you don't. But would it help? No, it wouldn't help. It's, it's not your department. Your, our department is to be competent. Our department is to heal and help. Leave what happens to them between the angels, the spirits, the demons rede redeemed, and the divine creator and the horsemen. 
There are two horsemen arrived now. There's a third one coming in December. His name is Michael. Have you heard of him before? Yes, I have. Okay, well, he's coming. He's coming to collect on bindings. Ah. So leave it up, leave it up to them. That's their job. Yeah? Yep, I'll do that. Okay, good. Okay, great. Thank you, Ron. A uh, question here on uh, the chat again, Frank. It, uh, the question is, if we issue an EDP, what is to prevent the laws and or future development and or refinement as they are still being developed by Eucadia from veering off the honorable course that I see and feel before me, mostly for those that will say Eucadia is incomplete and morphing? Uh, okay. Firstly, Eucadia is not incomplete. I mean, there has never been in history an attempt to create the body of code of law. There is, uh, the canons. Uh, but it is a massive idea and it is being unfolded. But to say that it, I would say incomplete, I don't want to be saying things that are misleading. Uh, if, if one implies by incomplete that it is not functional, then uh, <laughs> I just had the image based on the last call, I just had the image of the Death Star. Do you remember the Death Star in Star Wars? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, it was, and it looked like it was work in progress, you know, and, and that little statement where he said, uh, this is a fully functioning Death Star, and whammo, there it was. So, yeah, just, just, just when people say, you know, completeness equals function, uh, Eucadia is fully capable of functioning. Is it complete to what it needs to be? No, it's not. Will it be complete to where it needs to be by December 21, 2011? Probably not. Why? Because it's going to be up to all of you on the call and all those that listen to this call to make it complete. Franco Collins is not supposed to make this all complete in one foul swoop. I mean, that is, apart from being a, a, a terrible task, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not the competence that needs to, to be seen. The second thing is the EDPs, as they stand, are in a perfected form and no one should feel that any of the ecclesiastical deeds are, uh, are imperfect or subject to having some fundamental error. What we're doing is we're adding knowledge. Now, we are, when it comes to, for example, the EINs, we are refining our knowledge of their system. But that has nothing to do with the deeds itself. And the deeds are the single most important part of this. Because what is the deed? The deed is stating who you are, what you are, and by divine right. And, and really exposing and allowing the system to put itself in dishonor. And when a judge and a court puts itself in dishonor, then it validates the seven, one of the seven deeds that we spoke of before about binding. When a judge puts themselves in dishonor, they have singled themselves out for binding because they have validated that they are in dishonor and they deserve what comes to them as it is written in the seven deeds. So I hope that answers it, but please don't interpret um, incompleteness as some dis deficiency or adding information as somehow what we're doing is not ready. It is ready. It is absolutely ready. It's, it's better than anything there's ever been. Is it going to, to, to uh, change? The information will be added, but no, it's ready to be used now. Okay, thank you, Frank. Uh, next question. Are there seven archdemons called home to Lucifer under the article 47, Pactum de Singularis Calum? And then you're going to get back to the, the Saint, uh, Roman cult saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the question a bit on right. the are there, are there seven archdemons called home to Lucifer under the Article 47? There are, there are, more, than, there are more than seven. Uh, there are more than seven called home. Uh, let's have a look. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's quite a few there. Um, the question is that people ask, Why? Why does uh, Satan, Lucifer, and all these demons get a pass? Or, or, or how, how can this be divine if this also has these references to, to Satan? And there's, there's two massive issues, or three massive issues that people need to, to recognize. 
If you believe in hell, you believe